Okay, with all that built up, we are ready to start looking at the unit circle. Um, or just kind of a, a piece of it to begin. We're going to look at just the first quadrant uh, here of the unit circle. Now, what do we mean by uh, unit circle, real quick, I guess? Uh, unit circle is one in which the, um, I'll say this, uh, unit circle, the radius is one unit. Um, so the radius has a length of one. So from the center out to the edge of the circle, that's one unit, that's one, that's one, one, and one. Uh, it's just simplifying the calculations. The radius could be anything that we want. We're going to build it all with the radius of one unit. That's all. Um, so let's fill in kind of some of this stuff that, that we know so far. Um, let's see, this is zero degrees. This is... 90 degrees, right in the middle would be 45 degrees, and these two other lines are every 30 degrees. This is 30 degrees, 60 degrees. Uh, those of you thinking ahead are going to see why we did the 45-45 and the 30-60-90 triangles um, just prior to this. They're going to come kind of into play here. Um, the other lines out here, let's fill in the radiant measures. Um, zero degrees same as zero radians. Um, 90 degrees, we had done this prior to, uh, previously on another slide, 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. Uh, the rest of these, we can maybe get this one, 45 is half of 90, therefore the radian measure would be half of pi over 2, which would be pi over 4. Um, the other ones, let's go ahead and do maybe just a quick conversion. If I wanted to change 30 degrees into radians, I'd multiply by pi over 180. That would be 30 pi over 180, which would reduce to pi over 6. And the 60 degrees, if I did the same thing, 60 degrees times pi over 180 is 60 pi over 180, which reduces down to pi over 3. Okay, so there are your um, angle measurements, degrees, and radians, uh, and just the first quadrant of the unit circle. But once we build up the first quadrant, you'll see that the rest goes much quicker and easier. Um, now, the, the last thing to do is the points on the edge of the circle. It's the most important. It's how we're going to get um, all of our sine, cosine, tan of any angle value that we want uh, is going to come from these points. And so we'll do the easy ones first here. The easy ones, since this is a unit circle, length of one unit, think of this as the x-axis. Uh, this point is the point 1, comma, 0. This point up here is 0, comma, 1. There's the easy ones. Um, they're easy just because they're one unit away. Okay. Um, now for the other ones, we need to rebuild some of our special triangles um, within here. So let's do that. I'll try and get some, some color here. Hopefully we'll be able to see this. Let's look at this one right here. This is going to get a little bit messy, but we'll clean it up on another slide later. Okay, so we've got our 45, 45, 90. Um, the radius is 1. Uh, now this is different than how we built it uh, prior to. We had built it prior to saying that the, the legs were 1 and that this was 1 times the square root of 2. Um, now we know that this is 1. Um, so in order to get from you know, prior to, we had to get from the legs to the hypotenuse, we multiply by square root of 2. To go from the hypotenuse to the legs, we'd have to do the exact opposite. Um, the legs are going to be 1 divided by square root of 2. Each of those legs measures 1 divided by square root of 2. Now, we, of course, would not leave a fraction in an unrationalized form like that. We'd bring that radical up, bring this radical up. So the x value of the point is square root of 2 
over 2, the y value of the point is square root of 2 over 2. Okay? x comma y, horizontal vertical change. Uh, let's look at another one of these triangles. Let's take this one. Okay, I've got my 30, 60, 90. Uh, the hypotenuse measures one. Uh, prior to, we had built it so that the short leg here was one, but now we have the hypotenuse is one. And we had said that the hypotenuse was double the short leg. Um, so if we knew this one, we just times it by two and we got this. Well, now we need to do the opposite of that. So instead of times it by two, we'll divide by two to get back here. So if this is one, that's a half. And we had said that the longer leg was just whatever the short leg is times the square root of three. So this longer leg needs to be one half times square root of three. Um, if I rewrite that longer leg, it could look like this. Square root of 3 divided by 2, short leg going up is 1 half. There's our ordered pair point there. Um, the last triangle is another 30, 60, 90. Okay, so it's the same thing. This is, um, this is 1. Now the short leg's down here, that's a half. Now the long leg is here, that's a half times square root of three. It's essentially the same calculations as this point. They're just opposites. Now it's a half this way, and it's uh, square root of three or two up. Um, so this point is one half comma square root of three over two. There's our unit circle, our first quadrant of our unit circle. Okay, let's um, utilize this and let's do the entire unit circle uh, on the next slide. So kind of keep this handy, keep it kind of in front of you as we do this next slide. Okay, what we're looking at here is a blank copy of the unit circle. Um, we're going to fill in all the blanks. And I'll show you kind of how easy this is to, to do. It looks kind of intimidating. It looks imposing. There's a lot here. But uh, it's really not that bad to fill out, especially if we know that first quadrant stuff. Um, so let's start with, I'll just start in this kind of middle and work my way out. I'm going to do degrees first. Zero degrees. Uh, this is 30, 45, 60, and 90. Um, those are the ones we had done prior to. Uh, I know this one over here is 180. It's just 90 more. Another 90 more gets me this one, which is 270. Another 90 more gets me this one, which is 360. Full turn of the circle. Um, let's see. Notice these, if I skip the one in the middle, they count every 30. 30 plus 30 more is 60. Plus 30 more is 90. Plus 30 more is 120 plus 30 more is 150, plus 30 more is the 180 that I've got, plus 30 more is 210, plus 30 is 240, plus 30 is the 270, plus 30 is 300, plus 30 is 330, plus 30 is 360. Okay. Um, the line in the middle is 45. So 45 plus 45 is 90, plus 45 is 135 plus 45 is 180 plus 45 is 225 plus 45 is 270 and plus 45 is 315 plus 45 is 360 so it checks I've got all the degrees filled out now we need the radians slightly harder but there is a pattern uh, this makes it a little bit easier to do once we know the pattern uh, we start at zero radians. We know we're going to end at 2 pi. Um, some of the ones we know already, this one is pi because it's half of the whole. This one is pi over 2 because it's half of the half. Um, let's do the 45 degree lines first this time. Uh, on the last slide we said this one was pi over 4. Uh, an easy way to remember it is that every 
45 degrees is one fourth pi radians. So if this is pi over four, one pi over four, this is two pi over four, and it's been reduced. Two over four is a half. So again, let's start over. This is one over four, this is two over four, this is three over four. Three pi over four. This is four divided by four, which is one pi. This next one is five over four. Then becomes six over four, which reduces to three pi over two. Then comes seven pi over four. Then comes eight over four, which is two pi. Got it. Uh, every 30 degrees, let's see, we had said on the last slide that this is pi over six and that this one was pi over three. So here's kind of the, the shortcut. Every 30 degrees is one sixth pi radians. So this one is one sixth. This one is two sixth. This one is three sixth. This one is four sixth, but I reduce four sixth to two thirds. This one is five sixths. This one is six over six. This one is seven over six. This one's eight over six, which reduces. This one's nine over six. It's 10 over six. And this is 11 over six. Okay, so now we've got all the radians and we've got an easy way to remember how to do it. Just counting one fourth, counting one sixth. Okay, finally come the points. This is the important part. First, the x, y axis points. 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Now I'm just going to copy down the points we had on the last slide. This is square root of 3 over 2, comma, half. Square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. This is 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. If I know these three points, I can reflect them and make neg negatives appropriately in the right spot. I can get all the other points. Okay, um, This one up here on top is the same as this one. It's just got a negative x value because it's to the left. But its y is still going to be positive. So it is negative half square root of 3 over 2. This one, the one in the middle, is the same as this one in the middle, except it's got a negative x because it's going left. So it's negative square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. And this one, likewise, is negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, half. Now, these three points on the bottom, quadrant 3, um, well, there are these three points, respectively only they've got negative x's and negative y's. So negative square root of 3 over 2, negative half. Negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. And negative half, negative square root of 3 over 2. And then these three points are just the three original points from up above, but they're reflected down. They've got positive x's and they've got negative y's. So this one is square root of 3 over 2, negative half, square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2, and 1 half, um, negative square root of 3 over 2. And there it is. If we know, um, if we can memorize, if we can memorize these three points, we can get all the other points. Okay.